as always, uh, you can go back and download the NFC North, AFC North podcast or watch them on YouTube. The AFC East and NFC East were on Monday. We are, of course, on Wednesday. Now, let's move into the NFC South. The Atlanta Falcons, 7-9 and nine last year. Division championship odds, plus 320. Their strength of schedule, fourth toughest schedule projected in the league. Turnover margin, they were 15th, plus 1 which is pretty good. Head coach Dan Quinn, he will be uh, calling plays on defense this year. He didn't like what happened the last couple of years. But it, since he's been in Atlanta, they haven't really had a good defense anyway. Yeah, um, they've struggled on defense. Yeah, They've oh, got a lot of talent on defense, though. Yeah, they do. They, they should do. be better. Uh, now, of course, along with that, I mean, they were the eighth most injured defense in the league last year, fifth most injured secondary in the league, and that did not help things. Um over under is nine to go over is plus one oh five to go under is minus one twenty five. The offense was number four in yards per play last year. Six point two yards per play they averaged. That was under Steve Sarkeesian, who they let go. Uh, they have hired in offense coordinator Dirk Cutter. Part of that reason is while well, while you think, oh, number four in yards per play, that's pretty good, right? They were a, a top ten offense overall last year. But they were the 28th most efficient offense inside the 10, the 31st most efficient offense inside the 5. Uh, Dirt Cutter. They move the ball between the 20s pretty easily. Yes. Dirt Cutter needs to target Julio Jones more in the red zone. Period. Hey, I have a dude that's really big and really tall and really um, athletic and really fast. And don't even have him out there on some place. Yeah. They, they the targeted zone, they, him. They, they put him on the bench. He had three catches on seven targets. Inside the 10, they ran 73 plays inside the 10. It's, and they it's, only targeted it's him It's criminal times. what they've done. To it's him. just Now, insane. I know the love is his overreaction because the first eight games, he had zero touchdowns. And that's criminal. Yeah. Second eight games, they did lead the league in touchdowns. Yeah. So. Total yards per play on defense, uh, number 27, they gave up 6.0 yards per play. Again, like I said, eighth most injured defense, fifth most injured secondary they face four of the probable top 10 passing efficiency offenses. They need the pass rush to improve. Uh, look, this schedule is just ridiculously difficult. We said the over-under is nine. They are a projected favorite in only six games. I like the Falcons. I think they will get better. Dirk Cutter, the last time that he was actually calling plays, number 24 in red zone efficiency. Now, I know that that's weird. You can't really compare him because he was at Tampa Bay. But just looking on pure raw numbers, it's not a big improvement, right? So we'll see because they, they haven't had any problem moving between the 20s like we talked about. So we'll see if they can get better when they are in scoring position. Uh, I've got this team at 8-8. Eight and eight. I know that the schedule is hard. I think that they are insanely talented. I think the pass rush uh, will be better this year. I, I like Atlanta, but I've got them at 8-8. Eight and eight. I think this division is better. I, I think the schedule is hard. I don't know that I'm sold on on a lot of the the talent. Like like Matt Ryan's is a good quarterback. Nobody's going to deny that. He had an amazing MVP season with Kyle Shanahan. Yeah, he's never come close to replicating that after that. Is he a product of what Kyle was? I think I think there's some truth to that. Maybe. And I I just I think this team's going to take a step backwards from last year. I that, think that makes me wonder. Six and ten. That makes me wonder what you're going to think of. San Francisco when we do that tomorrow. And then well, I mean nothing too crazy, I assure you that. But like <laughs> here's here's the deal on and I could be way wrong. There's there's uh you know, obviously sports analysts. We listen to a lot of other podcasts and, and sports radio. A guy that I like to listen to, I mean, he has he has the Falcons picked as his Super Bowl contender for and the for There's the NFC. some teams I, that and, and I, some guys and I think that. six and six, and I kinda was like, maybe I'll go seven and nine because I value this guy's opinion, and I could be a game off. And I can't see nine and seven. I can't see ten and six. I just, it's I've I've got eight and eight, and and that maybe Dirk Cutter as an offensive mind does not scare me. No, I I, I really I value say, you know, Dan Quinn as a head coach when he got the job, and I think he's a stable guy, and I think he's always going to be around that seven and nine, eight and eight, nine and seven guy. But I don't know that. 
I don't know that he's anything really to be feared either. Well, I'll, t- I'll tell you this. It, we talked about the Falcons being number four in yards per play. Yeah. Number two was Dirt Cutter's team, yes. Tampa Bay. And but, and but it doesn't take into effect. Yards per play doesn't analyze picks. It, it doesn't analyze because it, it just it just calls that. it calls an interception an incompletion like Basically. my guy didn't catch the ball when we threw it well, that's, and that's all it does but that's but, why we bring up turnover margin etc that's right, right. because they, the three, in Tampa Bay they, yeah. they have a lot of yards but Fitz and 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 Jameis threw the ball like crazy the sometimes three biggest, it went to the other well, team the two biggest indicators for wins in the NFL are turnover margin that's correct and um, uh, early down success rate. Correct. Right. And and they were good on early downs, but just when you get into the red zone, they were a travesty last yeah, year. They just feel gold just galore. They yeah. can't they can't punch it in. You got that right. All right, moving on. Next up, the Carolina Panthers. Seven and nine last year. To win the division, the odds are plus four fifty this year. Strength of schedule, it's the eighth most difficult in the league. Turnover margin, tied for fifteenth, along with the Falcons at plus one. Head coach is Ron Rivera. I think we like Ron. Right? I think we I think we like Ron Rivera. I do like Ron Rivera. Over under is seven and a half. The juice on the over is minus one fifteen. The juice on the under is minus one oh five. They signed on offense center Matt Paradis. They drafted left tackle Greg a little. They are trying to shore up that offensive line, try and protect uh, Cam Newton a little more. Defense, they signed defensive tackle Gerald McCoy. That was a big offseason acquisition. Uh the defense was we felt like already pretty good, correct. But last year maybe not so much. They needed a little bit of help. They drafted defensive end Brian Burns from Florida State uh, in the first round. He will be expected to start immediately along with McCoy. Yards per play, they were number eight on offense last year. Five and that's point, what and that's what Cam missing time. Yeah, they were. Uh, they, I mean, five point nine offense coordinator Norv Turner. Uh, he had a lot to do with that. He understands. I mean, Christian McCaffrey was an absolute beast. Last year, he put up some insane numbers. Have you seen Christian McCaffrey in the offseason? Uh, no. No, his arms are like three times bigger than they were last year. I wonder if he can hold on to the football still. Oh, no, he looks amazing. <laughs> he looks incredible. You talk about a dude looking right in shorts and a T-shirt. He looks pretty good. I, Yeah, I think okay. I think he's, he's poised to just keep being, just give me the ball. Now, we, with Luke Keekley and, and that defense, we... Assume defense is good. Ron Rivera. Yes, kind of I, I trust. Guy. I trust Rivera and the defense to be solid. Uh, defense coordinator is Eric Washington. Their yards per play last year on defense, twenty eighth in the league. They gave up six point oh yards per play. That will have to improve this year. Yep. They are a projected favorite in eight games. Now, remember the over under seven and a half. I like them at eight and eight this year. So long as Cam stays healthy and everything, I think they're going to be fine. They also drafted a uh, Will Greer. Yeah, uh, I, to back up Cam, and it's going to take some time. I was about to say we're a long way from Will playing, but there's a but yeah. and this could be the that, same that, for a lot of teams. Back in the day, there was an old coach, general manager. I'm going to use the F word real quick. That that asked, well, well, what happens if if like you're never getting into your backups any practice time? What happens if Peyton goes down? He's like, if Peyton goes down, we're fucked, and we, <laughs> and we don't practice fucked. Like there's no there's no if Cam goes down. Look, I think Will was great in college. He might be a good pro player one day. When Cam goes down, it's it's over. Yeah, like, it's they're, tough. they're in a lot of trouble. I like this team a lot. I think they've done a lot to make Cam better, safer, not have to run so much. Um, I like this team a lot. I've got them. I've got them ten and six. Okay, okay. I've got them eight and eight. You got them ten and six. I really, really think this team's going to improve. I think offensively. Um, uh, Court and Sutton, not Court and Sutton. Man, I, I, I started getting into a path. D- DJ Moore's going to take a big step oh, up. Oh, yeah. Um, I think McCaffrey will be the, the guy. Well, McCaffrey's going to be the guy. I'm going to tell you what's going to help Cam. And, and I know you're going to laugh at me when I say this because in the offseason, our text messages have gone back and forth with a bunch of people. It's crazy. Cam Newton is no longer going to have to run the ball when they get into the red zone to get into the end zone. They're going to take those runs off of him because they're going to put Elijah Holyfield in the game and they're going to say, go get in the end zone because that guy is not capable of losing yards. He's, he's too big and too strong. I don't care how fast he ball. is. He's, he's too big and too strong. And if you need three yards to get in the end zone, you're just going to hand it to him. 
And there's nobody in the NFL that's stopping him from getting two or three yards. I don't know that anybody on the face of this planet loves Elijah Holyfield as much as you. Oh, do. there's no question that his daddy it, don't love him like I love. It, he, they don't. He, he just don't. He didn't even get drafted. I know. It's a, it's a that is a criminal offense. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> we we watch we go to combine and we let these guys get out there in underwear. Hang on, now we're gonna take some time for a minute. We let these guys go out there in underwear and say, "How do you look?" But but when you have game film of how they actually played when they strapped it on, and you see this guy's an absolute freak. Oh, but he didn't look good in his underwear. Well, who gives a shit? You're not playing the game in your <laughs> underwear. <laughs> You got to put pads on. You got to hold the football, and you got to mow people over. Kirby Smart lost a. My dog just came into the room. <laughs> to the room, heard me screaming. Sorry about this. Kirby Smart lost the game. Flat out lost the game at LSU strictly because he would not give the ball to, to Elijah Holyfield. He touched the ball eight times. He got eight yards per touch. That was against LSU. It was a little different the rest of the season. No, but it wasn't. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Every time he touched the ball, he got positive yards. Every time he touched the ball. Hold on. We're, we're, he's I'm... a complete monster. I, I really like this team. Holyfield might not make the roster. If he doesn't make the roster, I'm going to be furious. It, it, and I'm going to question everything I know about watching football. Why do you – I just don't get how you love him that Look, much. Look, because I've watched I him just... play. And I watched him play at a high level. I didn't watch him play at North Dakota State and him beat up on s smaller schools. I watched him play in the SEC, and I watched him run flat over Alabama defenses and Auburn defenses and LSU defenses and Florida defenses. The entire NFL is made up of those players on defense. All right, here we go. Last year, for Georgia had 159 attempts for 1,017 yards. Seems like a lot. It was 6.4 yards per That touch. seems like a lot. He had seven touchdowns. You know why? Because Kirby Smart doesn't give him the football. Well, and then he left early. Uh, okay. But I think that was because he understood that... Kirby Smart's, Smart's not going to give me the damn ball. Because he's an idiot, You think You think he'll make the roster? Uh, yeah, I'm going to be really upset if he don't make the roster. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be really upset if he don't make the roster. All right, we got two more teams we got to roll Sorry through. Sorry about that. Moving on, the New Orleans Saints, thirteen and three last year, won the division. Uh, really should have been in the Super Bowl, but that was my Super Bowl team last year, and I almost hit the nail on the head with the Saints of the Patriots. Yep. Division champions, their odds are minus one sixty. Strength of schedule is thirteenth, so easiest schedule in the division. Turnover margin, they were number seven last year at plus eight. Head coach Sean Payton, of course, we trust him. Offensive guru, he's the guy. Drew Brees, of course, with him. Their over-under is 10.5. To go over is plus 110 to go over. Uh, to go under is minus 130. On offense, total yards per play, they were number seven last year. They averaged 5.9. Their offensive coordinator, Pete Carmichael, he's been there for quite a while. Uh it is it's strange hard. to me that he's never gotten a head coach in the interview. Yeah, it's a little When a little the weird. league is just going offensive genius, but... Well, I think everybody believes it's Peyton. Well, right? they don't believe that it's Sean McVay, but I everybody's know, right? hiring anybody who's related to him. I just, I, I don't get it. Like, that. that logic doesn't make sense. No, it really doesn't. Go uh, ahead. Signed tight end Jared Cook and running back Latavius Murray and center Nick Easton, all of which will be playing significant minutes this year. That's right. On defense, total yards per play, they were number... 18 in the league gave up 5.7 defensive coordinator is dennis allen they signed defensive tackle malcolm brown and defensive tackle mario edwards both of which will be backups this coming season they are a projected favorite in 12 games this year really good i've got them at 11 and 5 i understand that the juice on the over 10 and a half is plus 110 i don't care i'm going 11 and 5 i like the schedule i like the team i think they are fired up after they felt like the nfl screwed them last year and they did and they did. And this year, I think this is Drew. Now, Drew, I understand. Drew Brees, at the end of the season, now they just paid Michael Thomas and just exorbitant amount of money. Um, but I think that's okay. They still got Alvin Kamara. They got all these guys. Like that. Ted Ginn Jr., he's a speedster, all this kind of mess. I think this team goes 11-5. and five, And I think that this is the, the last hurrah. Oh, no, this Drew is, Brees. they're all in this year. Yeah, there's, I understand that his passing efficiency went down at the, the second half of last season. That's because right. the defenses they were playing Correct. got significantly better. 
But they were still playing winning football. I think they're going to do the same thing this year. I I wonder how much they'll miss Mark Ingram because he was he was the between the tackles well, guy. But Murray is good by all measurable stats. Latavius Murray's been better than Mark Ingram. But Every, but everybody he, in football that's not a Bama guy, Gary, agrees that that this is an upgrade at backup. Okay. Okay. So. I mean, we, we shall see. Alvin Kamara, we'll see what's going on. I can hear it. You can hear all the you hear my dog jangling. 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 I apologize. <laughs> um, I've got them thirteen and three. I love this team, and I and I do think that they. So basically, if you look at what they've done salary cap wise, and and I'm not a cap guru. I kind of read other people, and they kind of tell me these things, and and I get a lot of this from Kevin Clark. That guy's a cap guy. He understands how it works, and he talks a lot about they have pretty much mortgaged the future salary-wise the last two to three years, going all in on Drew Brees' last couple of years. And and I, I think that if there's a team at the trade deadline that's going to make a move to try to get that big player or whatever, I think this team is going to do everything it takes to go all in on this team. Yeah. I think they're really good. I think Sean Payton is an exceptionally good head coach. And I think they got a lot of fire from last year. I think so, too. I, I don't see them losing many games <laughs> at all. I think they're going to be one of these teams that are going to take it personally, and they're coming at the league. Yeah, I'm with you. All right, you ready for the last one? Come on. One of your favorite guys. The Tampa Bay Bucks. That could have either been sarcastic or real, depending on who you're talking about. Well, we'll, we'll go with the real one first, then we'll okay. talk about the sarcasm <laughs> next. 5-11 and 11 last year, Dirk Cutter lost his job because they could not figure things out. Uh, division championship odds, plus 1,200 this year, which means basically not going to happen. Straight the schedule, number six, toughest in the league. Their turnover margin was 31st, so second worst in the league. Uh, minus 18 was their turnover margin. They're over under is six and a half this year. Six and a half. Kind of crazy. Um, I think it's a lot of trust in in this guy, who I think is one of your favorite guys, head coach Bruce Arians. He takes over the job. I was a little surprised he came out of retirement for this one. I am too, man. The juice on the over under, by the way, which is six and a half, is minus 110 both sides, over or under. Yards per play, they were number two in the league last year. They averaged 6.3 yards per play. They were kind of boom or bust, right? They A lot of big plays, but that's going to happen when you got Mike Evans and, and Deshaun Jackson, those kind of guys. Offensive coordinator now is Byron Leftwich, who was uh, the Arizona offensive coordinator two years ago? Yeah, with, with Bruce. His yeah, with first Bruce. Year. Yeah, getting that um, see job. They signed wide receiver Brashard Perryman. That's about the only offseason acquisition they did. They lost wide receiver Deshaun Jackson, so that's not going to be good. Uh, defense coordinator is Todd Bowles. They were number 31 in yards per play defense last year. They gave up 6.1 yards per that play. That will be better. Todd Bowles is a is a professional football coach. Yes, he's the former Jets head coach. They signed defensive tackle Nadama Kinsu. They signed defensive end Shaquille Barrett. They drafted linebacker Devin White from your LSU Tigers. They are a projected favorite in only three games this year. I like Bruce Arians. I think that Jameis Winston costs them games this year, as he has done every year from like dating back as far as you can go. This is his fifth year. He It's a contract year. He, they got to figure out, do we want to pay him? Do we not? Et cetera. I don't think that they decide to pay him mega money. I think they're going to be better. I think they are 7 and 9 this year. I think Arians finds a way to limit the mistakes, but sometimes you just can't coach turnovers no, out of it. There's nothing Arians is going to do to stop Jameis from throwing the ball to the other team. Yeah. You you can call whatever play you want. Jameis going to snap the football and it's going to be in his hands at some point and in time. And whatever happens in his brain is going to going to happen. Yeah. Now, Gerald McCoy losing him, I think in Dominican Sue is an upgrade from Gerald McCoy. They're both on the back side of their contract. They're only getting one year deals, and they're gonna have to prove themselves every year because of their age and the miles on them. But I think in Dominican Sue, when he shows up to play, he he can he will wreck an offensive line. And and I think I think that I'm I, I think that's an upgrade. I think adding Devin White, I but, but forget about my love of Devin White and my like for in Dominican Sue, Todd Bowles is the upgrade. I mean, they, yes. they haven't had a defensive mind in Tampa at this level in a long time. He's a professional coach. 
He knows what he's doing. Him and Bruce are close. They trust one another. I think Bruce is going to leave it to him, focus on the offense. And and I got him 6-10, and 7-9. and nine. I think you're right there. Um, they're going to be a game or two better than they were last year, just strictly with the stability of coaching. If they finished 8-8, eight and eight, it really wouldn't shock me. It just wouldn't surprise me. I can't tell you where I think those games will be. Um, you know, maybe I've got the the – the Saints a little inflated, and they can win a divisional game or something like that that, that, that I don't have them winning. Um, yeah, I mean, O.J. Howard at tight end. I mean, well, I no, know. the offensive skill players are, I mean. They got, they got Chris, great skill. Chris Godwin, every fantasy reporter for the last several years has been saying, this guy's going to break out, this guy's going to break out. If he don't break out this year, he ain't ever breaking out, okay? Yeah. But, but Mike Evans going to take all the heat, and it does not matter. He's too good of an athlete. He's going to go up and get it. Um, as long as Jameis makes it I don't catchable. think that they are as good as far as uh, their offensive yardage. I think their efficiency will well, go up. Yeah, but you can't you can't look at that stat because, once again, we talked about this earlier, it doesn't take into effect the turnover is not just an incompletion. Right. But an right. offensive I, yardage. I, I'm saying they're going to be better as far as their efficiency goes, I think. They're going to be better at every aspect of the game that matters to winning football. Yeah. Only I don't think they're – good enough to get over that well, lump at quarterback. It doesn't, it doesn't mean they're going to win all their games. It just means they're going to be better at all of those Yeah, they'll, stats. they'll be better than their 5-11 and 11 record last year. Correct. So, all right. That's going to wrap up our AFC and NFC South previews. As always, you can find the other ones on the podcast, Apple Podcasts, uh, Google Podcasts, Spotify, etc. You can also go back and watch the videos on YouTube. Go check those things out. You can find everything you need to over at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure you visit tunicatravel.com. Visit our buddies down in Tunica. They've got some exciting things going on. Six incredible sports books. Tunicatravel.com is the place to go for that. We will see you guys again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com. Or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.